Washington has now won four straight back to 500. We are. The Washington football team is at 6-6 six and six now, and with their win over the Raiders, as well as San Francisco's loss to Seattle yesterday, the football team moves up into the sixth seed for the playoff race. Now, Antonio Gibson... He is fifth in the NFL in rushing with 800 yards. He's got over 2,000 yards from scrimmage this season, save for the issues he's had with fumbling. Gibson is really starting to look like one of the best running backs in the league. He has also held on to, held on to the football in the last couple of games, which has been really important for this team. And I mean... Talking about peaking at the right time. Now, I'm continuing to also see growth in Jamin Davis. Now, Davis, he made some outstanding plays yesterday. He did have some missed tackles, but Davis is still developing into a fine linebacker, in my opinion. And I'm sure that a lot of us Washington football fans were saying it's about time. But talking about tackling the defense, well, what can I say? The defense had several missed tackles yesterday, and they committed some pretty bad penalties that really sustained scoring drives for the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm still getting used to saying Las Vegas. Um, that stuff definitely needs to be cleaned up if we're going to beat Dallas next week. That's, that's just that's long and short of it. Uh, Washington's, Washington struggled to get to Derek Carr yesterday, but that was going to that was really going to be expected. The Raiders do have one of the bat, the best pass blocking, I would say, probably in the league. So, you know, we only got to him once, I believe, with uh, Matt Ioannidis with his sack. I don't remember if we got to him any other time. We tried to put some pressure to him, but for the most part. Uh, Derek Carr had all day long to to uh, sit back there and pass the football. Now, would things have been a little bit different if Chase Young and Montez Sweat was in there? Probably. I, I think they definitely would have been. Uh, but, you know, we have who we have right now. So uh, we're just going to have to try to keep working at it. Um, you know, I, I do believe we have been getting to the quarterback for the most part in the last few weeks. It's just that, you know, against this um, offensive line who, you know, they were one of the best offensive lines in terms of pass blocking, just couldn't really get to Derek Carr. Now, looking at Logan Thomas. Now, Logan Thomas, we were so happy to see him back. He made some big plays for the Washington football team. But again, looks like we've lost him. Thomas got hit low, and for some of us Washington football fans, we we think it was a little bit of a dirty play, uh, but, I mean, technically, I guess it was a legal hit. Now, having said that, Thomas left the game with a knee injury, and from what I heard last night on Twitter, now, of course, Twitter isn't always the, you know, the gospel truth, but what I'm hearing is, Unfortunately, it could be an ACL tear, and we all know what that means. So losing Logan Thomas with an ACL is just devastating to us. I'm really going to have to try to get um, our other uh, tight ends stepping up there, which John Bates has stepped up. He is he has played pretty well. I feel like you know in the past few weeks, um, we need to get Ricky Seals Jones back if possible, because it looks like we're going to go the rest of the season without Logan Thomas. And that, my friends, is just, uh, oh, I just I just hate it. I just really hate it. Um, now, for Terry McLaurin yesterday, um, he had a couple of catches, um, but for the most part, he really wasn't a huge factor. Uh, we didn't see a lot out of Curtis Samuel, of course. Um, he's, you know, he kind of continues to work his way back into what I consider playing shape. Um, but, you know, we continue to see a lot out of 
uh, DeAndre Carter. And man, I tell you, I can't say enough about how lucky we are to have picked up DeAndre Carter and how much that he has developed as a wide receiver for us. I mean, he's had to come in and do it out of necessity, and we have just kept the hot hand with him. Um, you know, Cam Sims is healthy, but right now, if we're getting production out out of Andre Carter, then you're going to want to keep on feeding him the football, and he has played extremely well for us. Um, you know, we haven't really seen a lot out of uh, Diami Brown this year, and you know, I usually chalk it up as I'm not going to be too hard on the wide receivers in their rookie seasons. Having said that, Brown does need to step it up. He needs to contribute. I know that he's been contributing in terms of pass blocking or, or I guess maybe run blocking, you know, whenever one of the other receivers has the football running down the field. You do see Brown in there uh, with some nice blocking, but he has not really had any production, and that is definitely a, a an issue for us. Uh, but you know who is not an issue for us is – Taylor Haneke. I mean, Taylor, now, he didn't have the best game yesterday, but he continues to be a leader on offense. And the dude is a fighter, and he's just, he continues to win. And, you know, the only criticism I'm going to have of Taylor Haneke at this point would certainly be that he needs to try to not pass the ball off of his back foot all of the time. He does that constantly. That is something that he needs to get out of his game. That's one thing that if you're being pressured, there's a receiver that's open, you think you can get it to him, and you're going to pass it off of the back foot and make a play, I understand. But there's times where he passes it off of his back foot, and he's got time to sit, you know, to stand, plant his, both of his feet, and drive into that pass, and he just he doesn't. And uh, so that's something I want to see Taylor Haneke kind of clean up. If he can get that cleaned up, he's going to be more accurate in his passes. It's not going to feel as if he's taken as many chances. Now, yesterday he did look like he forced a few passes. Uh, one got picked off. He could have had a lot more interceptions yesterday that were dropped. So, not the best day for Taylor Heineke, but man, I will say I don't think that we need to worry about looking for another quarterback. I really don't. I think I think this is Heineke's job. And I especially say that if he continues to, to play like he has overall and he gets this team into the playoffs and if the Washington football team actually wins a playoff game with Taylor Heineke. Don't see how you could say, okay, that's great. Now we're going to go out and find another quarterback next year. Now, I, I think this is Taylor Haneke's team. All the other players around him have rallied around him. They want Taylor Haneke as their leader, and they're going to have it. Uh, so, you know, Taylor Haneke, you know, like I said, he didn't play that well yesterday, but... You know, he, he was, he was what, um, 23 of 30. That's actually not too bad. 196 yards passing, two touchdowns, and that one pick. Um, you know, Washington, they started off hot in this game, and then after a while, things kind of cooled off. They didn't score until the fourth quarter. Um, and, you know, it was definitely one of those games where it was like, okay, the offense needs to step it up. If they don't step it up, you know, the Raiders are going to come back and beat you. And the Raiders came back. They jumped out ahead of us. And then, of course, we have our newly signed kicker, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson, who kicks a 40, was a 49 48-49 yard field goal to put the Washington football team back in front to win the football game. Now, we all thought that Brian Johnson was going to come in and be a little thunderstruck. 
Um, okay, that's an ACDC reference. Some of you guys are not going to get that. But, I mean, Johnson, hey, guess what? If you're going to be our field goal kicker, you're going to have to be put in those situations where it comes down to your leg, your kick, your accuracy to win the football game for us. And he didn't disappoint. He nailed the, the field goal, and he did everything we asked him to do. And so my thumbs up to Brian Johnson, who basically won the game for us yesterday. I mean, let's look at this, folks. You know, looking at reactions to Twitter, a few weeks ago there was a bunch of gloom and doom. All right? Gloom and doom. And, I mean, you know, you can't blame fans because they were frustrated. We were 2-6, and six, basically looking at a team that is still rebuilding. And we were spoiled by last season. Even though it was technically a losing season, we won the NFC East crown. We got into the playoffs. So we were spoiled by that. And, you know, so... Having said all that, I mean, we were just, Twitter was just a toxic place. <laughs> you know, fans were just like, you know, they were jumping off of the Ron Rivera bandwagon like crazy. Um, they, and myself included, were pretty much saying, you know, Taylor Haneke is who we kind of figured he should be considering he didn't get drafted, all this stuff. And so we were basically, you know, we're just basically saying, you know, this team is just not there talent-wise. And then they have the bye week, they come out, and they're playing exactly the way that we expected this team to play. Now they've won four straight. Taylor Haneke has played about the best football you can ask him to play. And things are coming together despite the major injuries that we have had to some very key individuals on this team. And this team keeps fighting. They really do. And um, fans are starting to see that, and they're getting excited. Even the ones who did not want to get excited with this, they're like, wow. They are They're just really, uh, we're back, man. And we're ready for Dallas. We're hosting the Cowboys next week. And, you know, Jason Wright, president of the Washington football team, has already told fans, please come out. Ron Rivera said, fans, we need you. We need your support. And I wish I could be there. Unfortunately, I cannot. I would love to be there in person. But I will say, if you have tickets, if you're able to go, Go, because this team needs the support with their fans. This is a huge game. Washington and Dallas, this is a big, big game for us. If the Washington football team can beat the Dallas Cowboys next week and go five straight, and suddenly they're above 500, I mean, we're still in the running for the NFC East division crown. That's all we have left, folks our division games. So the Washington football team definitely needs your support. And as well, the Washington football maniacs need your support as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this, these videos, please consider subscribing. Um, like these videos, share these videos. Um, just, you know, any support you can give me will be just greatly appreciated. All right, folks, that is it. I've got to get to work. I hope you guys have a great day and hell to the Washington football team.